Did you know that the right shelter can make or break your next hiking mission? When you're on a hike, navigating diverse terrain requires more than just a sturdy pair of boots. The secret, I think, is the shelter you return to after a long day's trek. Today, we are diving into the world of tents. Let's get into it. Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm Mauser and on this channel we look at everything hiking from trails, from great walks, but in particular we look at gear you need to complete a successful hike. This is the gear that makes our adventures possible and today we are focusing on that very essential piece of kit for those extended overnight and longer hikes, we're looking at your tent. Now with over three decades hiking experience in Tasmania and Australia in some pretty wild wilderness, I think I've got a few tips on how you can choose the right tent for your needs. But let's not mess around, let's get straight into the video. Today, let's talk about tents. Now, first up, I think Tasmania, where I live, is a fantastic testing ground for tents. It isn't just one kind of terrain here in Tasmania. From sandy beachside campsites, to rainforests, to rocky mountaintops that are exposed to all the elements, there is something for everyone here in Tasmania. And the landscape is as diverse as it is beautiful. Each type of landscape has its own set of challenges, not only with walking, but when you are camping. So the first question you need to ask yourself when you are selecting a tent is, where will I be camping the most? You need to understand your need and where you're going to be using this tent. If you're someone like me, you want a tent that can sort of fit the bill and cover most of these different landscapes. And for me, I've found sort of two tents that I go to over and over again over the years here in Tasmania that I find suit my needs on all sorts of terrains. That is the MSR Mother Hubber and the Big Agnes Copper Spur. Now, first up, I've got no affiliation with these brands. There's no affiliations at all. If there ever is, I'll leave it in the comments below and in the description. But these are just two tents that I have used a lot. Now, I'm just using these as examples of what I've found to be good tents. And I'm gonna run you through how I selected them straight after we have a look at them. But here we go. The Mother Hubber. This has been a solid companion for me for 13 or 14 years now. Well, so five minutes later and it's still pouring. Yeah, it's not very nice outside. Not nice at all. Not very nice. It's highly durable, it's easy to set up, and it's really good in big winds. And the thing I love most about it is that it's nice and spacious. At the end of a long day, at the end of walking in the rain all day, I can retire to my tent. If there's two of us, we've got plenty of room to spread out in the Mother Hubber. The Big Agnes, on the other hand, is a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, but still gives me that comfort and that room. It also packs down small, and I'm a big fan of it, and I've been using it for the last two years. Quickly, before we move on, if you're liking the video, if you're enjoying it, please remember to like, hit that thumbs up down below, and even hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more of this content, then we'll be coming your way with more videos every week we're dropping one so please like please subscribe and if you're really keen hit that bell notification too and you'll get notified of when a new video drops but in the meantime let's get back into the video so we've figured out our needs and what we're going to be using this tent for the second thing i normally look at when i'm deciding on a tent is the ease of setup i don't want anything too complicated i want something that's going to be quick and easy to set up especially on those rainy, windy days when all I want to do after 10 or 12 hours of hiking is get into that tent as quickly as possible. Sorry to interrupt this transmission. We uh, have had a fair bit of rain overnight after we got up Victoria Cross, which you may have just seen. We um, came back and it just rained. So ease of setup. How long is it going to take me to set up? And generally, any tent that I have shouldn't take me much more than five minutes to set up. If it's easy to set up, it also means it's pretty easy to take down. So two factors that I consider is ease of setup, ease of takedown, and how it packs down and gets into my pack. The next thing I look at is weather resistance. Now, Tasmania can throw some curveballs at you weather-wise. You can be walking in beautiful sunshine one minute, and the next minute you're in snow, you're in rain and heavy winds. I do not know how many times I've been walking in beautiful weather and then that afternoon or an hour later, I am in full wet weather gear. I am been pelted by the wind and I need a strong, solid shelter to look forward to at the end of the day. I do not want to be worrying about whether or not my tent is gonna hold up. So I want a tent that can 
stand up to the wind on those really windy days. I want it to keep me dry when it is just torrential pouring rain. Then I also want the option to be able to have a bit of ventilation and a bit of airflow on those hot summer nights when it gets really warm. Now, personally, I prefer a double walled tent. What does that mean, you say? What do you mean double walled? Double walled means it's got both an inner tent, an inner often mesh or fabric or a combination of both. And then it's got the external fly. That's the external sort of rain cover, the external raincoat for your tent that covers the entire tent and just keep fastens down around the edges and keeps the rain out. That is a double walled construction tent. And the reason I love a double walled tent in Tasmania is that it allows me to A, regulate the airflow. I can regulate it much easier than I would with a single walled tent. And also the condensation build up in a double walled tent is much less than a single wall where you've only got one layer of fabric protecting you from the outside. Those single wall tents can lead to a lot of condensation, a lot of dripping inside the tent. And in Tasmania, I do not think you would want anything other than a double walled tent for the three seasons that I'm mainly hiking in. You also want something that's gonna be very good in the wind here. Wind can just come up from nowhere. And even if you're in a relatively sheltered area, it can really play havoc on your tent. That's where things such as the amount of guy lines you can put on your tent, that's those little strings, those little ropes that come off the main sort of apex points of your tent. It's important to know where they are, how many are there, and if you're gonna be able to secure the tent down when the gale forces really come in. And the other thing is the sort of tent stakes, but that is a separate sort of scenario. I prefer to generally add in a few stronger tent stakes to my tents than what come with the actual tent. The MSR Groundhog stake is a great one that I just normally take at least sort of four or five of them as well as a longer titanium, is it titanium? That stuff. That's a lightweight metal anyway. The other longer MSR stake, I'll flash it up on the screen, is another one that I take. I mostly swap out the proprietary tent stakes that come with the tent for some of these more durable solid options that I know are going to secure my tent to the ground on those really windy days. The other thing about weather resistance is you want to make sure you've got a bathtub floor or bathtub. Bathtub, I'm in Australia, it's a bathtub floor here. The bathtub floor, that's the, the sort of solid floor that comes up around the edges and before the mesh starts. So if there is water and pooling around the base of the tent, it won't come into the tent ideally. And that is your bathtub floor. The next factor I like to consider is weight and durability. Now, in terms of weight and durability, tents these days are made from some pretty crazy materials. There's things such as Dyneema or DCF, Dyneema composite fiber, Cuban fiber it used to be called. Many tents have been made out of these these days. And there's even a lighter or so-called lighter and tougher fabric these days, which is called Challenge Ultra Sailcloth fabric. I know Tarp 10 have just released a tent in those. Looks like a good product, but you really just need to consider the type of walking you're doing. For Tasmania's ever-changing terrain, sometimes a few extra grams of weight are worth carrying to ensure that you've got a truly robust shelter. And again, to ensure that it is as durable as possible, I tend to always carry a ground sheet with my tent. Now, you don't necessarily have to buy the proprietary ground sheet that the tent making company are selling. I have, for a couple of my tents, I have just a Tyvek ground sheet that I've bought online. I'll leave a link below to Tyvek ground sheet sort of scenario that I've used. And if you are buying a ground sheet, it should just be a tiny bit smaller than the floor of your tent, than the floor area. That You don't want it coming outside the edges of the tent because if water comes down, it can then pull over into the ground sheet and sit on top of the ground sheet and then lead to moisture getting in through the base of the tent. You don't want that. Now, I personally, I don't like the full mesh inners of tents. Not a fan in Tasmania. The weather just changes too often too quickly. If I was going and I had, knew I had an absolutely 100% really good weather window, we've just got a really nice high pressure system coming through, great weather for the next few days, then I might take a full mesh inner but generally I do a combination. It's got a bit of a fabric and mesh in it on both my Mother Hubber and my Big Agnes. It's just what I prefer personally. I've also got a tarp tent and I bought the full fabric in it for that one, just so I'm fully covered in all sort of three seasons that I go hiking here in Tasmania. Some tents also save weight by having things like carbon fiber poles and the pole technology. They have less poles, they might have more poles, but it just comes down to that weight, that durability, the weather resistance you are looking for in your tent. So that all is sort of a factor and will determine the amount of poles and stuff when you are selecting your tent. Now, the final thing I consider, and that often gets bumped up the list a bit when I'm considering a tent, is something that is pretty important, especially when you've got bad weather and you're gonna be in the tent 
for extended periods of time, and that is space and comfort. Now, after a long day's hike, I just want to stretch out, relax. I want to kick back in my tent and be comfortable. And especially if there's more than just me in the tent, if I'm with a hiking buddy, if there is even three of us in the tent, I want to be able to have as much room as I possibly can to spread out, to get my gear out, uh, especially on those wet days, I just want a bit of space. So when I'm selecting a tent, I always think about things like the height of the tent inside. Am I able to get up and around and get changed in there? How much floor space is there? And, and the manufacturers on their websites will have the dimensions of the tent. You really need to look at that. Think about the width of your sleeping pads that you're gonna have in there. How many sleeping pads are you gonna have in there? Uh, I've just moved to a 25 inch wide sleeping pad. Most are about 20 inch. I'm just going for that extra comfort factor but just consider how many people you're gonna have in there, how many sleeping pads, measure it all out before you go diving in and making a decision. The other thing I think is really important here where the weather is always nasty is the amount of vegetables. Vestibles, what are they you say? What is a vestibule? Well, the vestibule is that little area just outside the main tent, still under the tent fly, but it's where you chuck your gear that you're storing outside of the tent. It just gives you that little bit of shelter for your gear to store it over night time. I think that is essential to have a vegetable on a tent and if there's going to be more than one person in the tent you want two vegetables i think which is why i've gone for the tents i have they both have two vegetables with a reasonable size vegetable i have one because on those rainy days when we set the tent up in the rain and a video on that's coming soon on how to set the tent up in the rain when it's raining i'll set the tent up Anyway, I digress. It's great on those rainy days when you get to camp, you've quickly set up your tent and you just jump in the tent, shut the vestibule, have all your wet stuff in that little outdoor area. While the rain's not falling on you anymore, you can strip off and get all your wet stuff into that area outside of the tent, then get in the tent and stay nice and dry, as dry as you can on a day like that, and then stretch out and get dry. Just having those two vegetables makes everything so much nicer when there's a couple of you in the tent getting organized doing your own thing you can just get organized and not wait outside for the other guy to get into the tent before you can i love it and that is basically the quick sort of rundown of what i consider when i'm looking at tents i'm always looking at them i'm not buying them all the time but i am looking at them all the time so there you have it i just go quickly through those points again one understand your need what are you using the tent for think about that two ease of setup is it easy to set up or is it just like a, you need architectural drawings to set this thing up? Three, the weather resistance. How's it going to cope in the wind, in the rain? Or are you just using it in the summertime at the beach with the kids going for one night somewhere? Consider those factors. Four, weight versus durability. Consider the sort of weight you are prepared to carry. How many people are going to be carrying the tent? You can split it up between two or three of you. How long are you going for? Do you need something pretty durable, pretty sturdy? And lastly, the space, the comfort. How much comfort do you want in your tent? Is it going to be raining all the time? Do you want to, are you going to have a rest day? If it's a rest day and it's raining, do you want to be able to stretch out the tent, and play some cards and put your little table up in there that you've carried in? with your chair i don't know but it's something to consider now personally i prefer a three-man tent when i'm going with two people two-man tents really are quite tight i like my room i like my space and for the extra little bit of weight between two people i generally take the the mother hubba or i think it's called the hubba hubba three-man these days or the big agnes three i tend to prefer that these days this this bigger tent where i've got a bit more space to spread out when you're getting older you just want a bit more room in the end the perfect tent is as unique as your hiking journey but make sure to consider the terrain and the climate of where you are going to ensure that you are ready for everything that mother nature might throw at you and trust me when i say that the right tent is not just a little shelter it is a home away from home so do your research and get something that you're going to be happy with. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please check out the links below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That would make a big difference. We've just hit 500 subscribers, which is huge. I'm really happy. Like, thanks guys. Thank you. for If you've watched this far and you've subscribed, you're one of those 500. I thank you very much. It means the world to me. If you've got any tent tales or suggestions or little stories about tents, everyone's got a tent story, then leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, till next time, where I'm going to actually review the Big Agnes Copper Spur. I'm going to, well, maybe not next time, but in a video very soon, I'm going to review the Big Agnes Copper Spur HVUL3. Mine's actually the Mountain Glow. We'll get into that on that video. Stay tuned for that. That's coming soon. In the meantime, get out there. 
It's spring here in Australia. Get out on those trails. It's really coming into the nice weather now. Get out, do a hike. If you've got any suggestions for some good hikes, let me know that too. And I will see you next time. Oh, and what do you think of the new studio? I've moved studios. I've kicked one of my kids out of this room and we're in a new studio. So happy days. Right, see you next time. I've got to go. I'm going for a walk and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.